Hi there, it's Mrs. Gleason again. In this video, I'm going to share with you one of the stories that I wrote. So this story, Give a Care, Don't Mess the Land, Water and Air by Mrs. Gleason. Dedicated to all future children, include you. And here's my dragon. Chapter one. Patience, the psychiatrist, was a peculiar, partly purple dragon. She helped people in town with their problems. She always had a solution. Her true patience was why she could perform her job to perfection. She wasn't the prettiest dragon around, but her personality made up for what was lacking in the beauty department. Besides from having purple legs, feet, arms, hands, and head, she had a green and orange checkered body, tail, and neck. Her ears and wings were stripes of blue and pink with a hint of purple. The only pride she took in her looks was her pretty pink toenails. Patience was perfectly happy with her life as a psychiatrist. She really enjoyed perking people up. When she wasn't working, she would take long private walks soaking in the changing world around her. Such beauty prevails in nature, she would always say to herself. The only problem she ever had with people was that some of them destroyed nature by littering or polluting the earth, air, or water. This really upset her because she appreciated nature's beauty. This was the only thing she did not have the answer to. She did not know how to make people realize how they are mistreating the earth they live on. Why would anybody take for granted such beauty? Chapter two. When will I ever learn? Marvel said to himself. He just lost his third job of the year. For some reason, he could not keep a castle clean, though it was the only job he knew how to do. Of course, to him, it was the queen's fault she wanted everything perfect and claimed everything had its place. Marvel's webbed hands caused him to be quite clumsy. Besides be, from being rather awkward when out of the water, he was a very handsome moat monster. Female moat monsters marveled at his blue, yellow, and orange scales sparkling in the day's sun. His extremities were brilliant orange and yellow. His bold body made women melt. When he was not working, he would often soak up the sun's rays, laying next to the moat. He also enjoyed swimming in the moat. He had an excellent breaststroke. Often people would stop by to watch him because he was so good at swimming and easy on the eyes. Since he was out of a job, he needed to search for another castle to work at. He was really sad to be doing this again so soon. He would really like to settle down with one job and make some lasting friends. He was hoping his next job would be just what he wanted. If only his dreams would come true. Chapter three. Spring flowers filled the air. So many buds were blooming that it was hard to distinguish the fragrance of one flower over another. As Patience looked around the colorful garden, she couldn't help but feel that this day was going to be a special day. She didn't know why or how, but just a tingling warm feeling inside. Mr. Feeling was saying to her, Patience, something fantastically significant is going to happen to you today. At the end of the garden, there were some beautiful marble benches, shaved down to look like the queen's favorite flowers, roses. Next to the benches grew monstrous trees with lovely hanging branches and deep green leaves swinging in the wind. This is where Patience sat down to think. She liked to plan out her day ahead of time, even though she would stray from it. It just so happened that after Marble left his old job, he wandered to the town where Patience resided and worked. The garden caught Marvel's eye and he was walking through it the same day Patience was there thinking on one of the benches. Marvel observed the gleaming white rose benches and decided that would be a nice place to sit down and rest. Patience noticed the handsome moat monster right away. 
Because Patience was not a shy dragon, she asked the moat monster what brought him to her town. Marble replied, I am looking for a new job, and asked, my name is Marble, what is yours? Patience said, Patience, I am the town psychiatrist. I love working here. Patience and Marble, Patience and Marble talked for a long time good hour. How they were enjoying one another's company, but Patience had to get to work. She hated to leave Marble, so she asked him to meet her for dinner at the town's eatery, and he agreed. Chapter 4 While Patience was at work, Marble had a lot of time to explore the town he knew so little about. It seemed like the perfect place to settle down. The castle had a better moat to swim in. He really wanted to jump in, but he didn't feel the people of the town would be happy to have a stranger doing the best backstroke in their moat. Patience couldn't wait for work to end, so she could meet Marble for dinner. She was with her last client who was complaining, complaining about his children driving him crazy. He needed some time to himself during the day. While the client was talking, Patience noticed Marble outside playing with some children. Patience had a wonderful idea, and she would suggest it to Marvel at dinner. Patience told the client she may have a solution to his problem, and many of the other house parents in town. Marvel and Patience arrived at the eatery at the same time. The hostess showed them to one of the best tables overlooking the garden where they met. After they had some small talk and ordered their meal, Patience decided to ask Marvel her question. Patience set up her question. I saw you playing with some children this afternoon. I really love children, Marble said. Patience asked, how would you like it if playing with children was your job? You could play every day. Marble replied, I would love it. Are you serious? Yes, you could be the town's activity director. We really need one. How am I going to repay you, Marble asked. Just enjoy your new job. Their food arrived and it tasted perfect. The dressing on the salad was like nothing Marvel had ever tasted before. The meat could be cut with a spoon and melted in their mouths. After dinner, they had tea and shared a mountain-high chocolate cake. While they nibbled on the, their dessert, they talked and talked. By the end of the evening, they must have known everything there was to know about each other. Since there were no other moat monsters living in the moat, Marvel made his home there. The next day was another work day for Patience and Marvel's first day. While at work, Marvel remembered how Patience said it, was re said it really bothered her when the people of the town littered everywhere. He realized working with children gave him a tool to solve her problem. First, Marvel educated the children about how littering and how it could eventually ruin the earth we live on. Then he asked the children what they could do to get their parents to help out with this problem. A couple of children suggested having a special cleanup day. When their parents realized how much work it was to clean up all at once, maybe they would work at keeping the earth clean each and every day. Marvel and the children planned this event for the next week and didn't tell patients what they were doing. Everyone who was involved, which was most of the town, was told not to tell patients. The day came for the big event. Patients was wondering why she had no appointments for the day. She decided to take a walk to her favorite place, and on the way she saw everybody cleaning up the town. She couldn't believe her eyes. She asked someone what was going on, and that person told her what they were doing, and that the new activities director was in charge. Just then, Marvel came up to Patience and said, Thank you for getting me a job that I love. Patience responded, Thank you, too. I never thought it was possible. The town looks great. Everybody lived happily ever after in their clean little town. And then the last page in the book about the author. Mrs. Gleason is 24 years old and pregnant with her first child. She enjoys painting, spending time with her family, and many outdoor activities. This is her first published dragon story. The end.